Soaking yarn by hand is the ancient method this dye house has been using for over a century. It's one of the last in Egypt, a country long known for its textile industry. <laughs> Salama Selem has been the one keeping the vats full and the fires burning since 1975, even as industrial competition and the global pandemic have threatened his livelihood. We first visited the workshop in 2019 and came back to see how it's weathering the pandemic. Through it all, one man's love for the craft has kept this tradition still standing. Salama begins a batch by prepping the yarn. He separates the white threads into sections. Then his sons mix dye with water that's just the right temperature. The hotter the water, the brighter the color. It takes two people to dunk the yarn into the 40-year-old stone basin and drag it through the dye. Once the threads are completely saturated, it's time to wring them out using a spinning machine. At about 15 years old, it's the only modern piece of equipment in the workshop. After a few minutes, the yarn is hung out to dry on the roof of the workshop for about two hours. Then it's packaged and shipped to customers all over the world. It's a family operation that often involves Salama's 12 children and many of his more than 40 grandchildren. Salama has tried out a handful of professions, and he even served in the military for nine years before settling on dying. Now he's been running the dye house for 45 years. Today, business has been slower than usual since the spread of COVID-19. But it doesn't stop Salama from putting in the work. The workshop's small-scale operation has made it hard to keep up with mass manufacturers. Most textile dyeing in Egypt and around the world today happens at larger industrial-scale factories. About 70 miles west of Salama's workshop, Chinese investors announced in 2019 the construction of what would be one of the largest textile zones in the country. The COVID-19 pandemic has slowed the project, but once in full swing, investors expected to bring in more than $8.5 billion a year. Meanwhile, Salama's sales have been dropping for more than a decade. They fell nearly 60% in 2011, after the Arab Spring protests rocked the Egyptian economy. Today, fuel prices are still too high for Salama's margins. So he cuts costs by using wood instead of gasoline to make fire and heat his dye vats. Though it might be more physically taxing, he takes pride in this traditional method. Salama's ancient techniques are what keep many of his customers loyal. But his regular clients that usually put in orders every month have dropped off to every two or three months since the start of the pandemic. Still, Salama is determined to keep this business alive for as long as he possibly can. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die.